We hear that he catches thieves just like flies, and he can do whatever a spider can. Watch out, here comes your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. But wait a minute, which Spider-Man? We've had a new Spider-Man in town for a couple of years, and his name is Miles Morales. I saw you on the news today. That goblin, he looks so dangerous. You know I have to do this. It's kind of my responsibility. But as they both don the Spidey suit, we can't help but wonder what traits they share and what cool stuff can Miles do. Want to find out? Watch the rest of our video to learn more. Before you go slinging those webs around, make sure you sling one over to our subscribe button so you can join the CBR notification squad and keep up to date with all of our awesome Spidey videos and so much more. Stay alive. Peter Parker was a great and skilled Spider-Man, there's no question about that. But let's take into account Miles' journey so far. Considering he's been Spider-Man for less than two years, Miles has faced more than his share of near-death experiences. However, Miles' ability to stay alive when placed in these situations speaks volumes about his awareness and adaptability, especially considering his age. What are you, 13? Maybe. What are you? 150? When Miles fights the Green Goblin shortly after Peter's death in Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 7, he uses his energy burst to defeat him instead of being killed. During Secret Wars, Miles is able to use his wits and hides aboard a ship as Earth-1610 and Earth-616 collide, which allows him to survive the initial collision of the two worlds. When he wakes from stasis in Battle World, he befriends Molecule Man and provides him with a hamburger that he happened to have on him. Because what better way to make friends than with a burger, right? Molecule Man saves Miles, and as a sign of good faith and an appreciation of Miles' kindness, Molecule Man also brings back his mother. I finally get to see my mom! So not only does Miles have the ability to stay alive against foes who just can't stay dead, but his actions also bring back his loved ones. Alleged Immortality Regeneration is awesome, but how about immortality, or more specifically, returning from the grave? In Ultimate Comics issue number 3, where Norman Osborn was responsible for killing Peter Parker, Miles discovers that Osborn has come back from the dead. Not only that, but he's planning on going after Peter's family. Hello, my dear. Miles tracks Osborn to Peter Parker's house, where Osborn has once again shifted into the Green Goblin. After a lengthy battle where the Green Goblin escapes and then comes back later to continue the fight, Osborn reveals a huge secret. He alleges that the Oz formula that the strain of spider that bit Miles was from had one side effect. This side effect was immortality. And here we thought all side effects were bad. However, Osborn is certifiably insane at this point. He believes that he is Miles' father because he created the Spider-Man. He further alludes that Miles Miles will never truly know the full extent of his abilities and the truth of who he is without him. Given that Osborn initially created the Oz formula to cure disease and Peter Parker died and came back, there is some merit to this madman's ramblings, which may pose a fun and interesting plotline in Miles' future. Regenerate the ability to regenerate has always been one of our favorite powers. This is another of Miles' abilities that differs slightly from Peter's, his ability to heal at an accelerated rate. Though Peter and Miles are similar in this regard, Miles appears to be slightly more durable and the limits of his regenerative abilities have not yet been fully explored. Miles' regenerative abilities make an appearance in Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 11 where he wakes up from being drugged, but instead of being groggy, he's able to burst from his restraints and fight back. Now this is a win. In the same issue, he's able to withstand several thousand volts of electricity. Shocking, isn't it? In issue number 12, he can withstand being tortured by Doctor Doom and still have enough energy to save himself and his father. Is this what being Spider-Man is really like? <laughs> Almost every day. His ability to regenerate at an accelerated rate has also helped him in big villain battles. One of these battles involves Miles surviving being in the center of an explosion caused by Venom without so much as a scratch on him. His regenerative powers also proved to be useful during his battle with the Green Goblin in Ultimate Spider-Man issue number 4, after the Green Goblin lights him on fire. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess, guess that's, that's not, not good. good. <laughs> guess that youth really is resilient. Spider-Sense one of the cool abilities that Spider-Man has is his Spider-Sense, which warns him of immediate danger. Initially, Miles' Spider-Sense seemed to be weaker than that of Peter's. However, in Ultimate Comics Spider-Man issue number 3, Miles dreams of being attacked by Electro, who's come to kill Spider-Man. When he awakens, he's told that Spider-Man has been killed. Miles figures out that the dream was actually a warning that danger was coming. This suggests that his Spider-Sense might actually encompass more than just immediate danger like Peter's does. Miles' Spider-Sense may eventually develop into something much larger and more significant as time goes on. Dream State Spider-Sense sounds pretty cool, don't you think? This Spider-Sense also seems to affect him physically and comes across louder depending on the threat level. In Nova number 4, Miles' Spider-Sense goes haywire, indicating that there is a serious threat 
and that he and his team need to escape from the battle or risk serious injury. Miles' spider sense also seems to work faster than Peter's, as shown in Spider-Man issue number 2, when Miles' spider sense goes off before Peter's as they're about to be attacked by a demon. Could it be because Miles is younger or because he studies so much? What do you think? Speak Spanish Though Peter Parker was able to appeal to the residents of New York, he had some difficulty connecting to some of the residents in his own city and even within his own community, specifically when it came to language barriers. We all know that Miles' cultural background is not technically an ability, but he is bilingual, which is an ability. He can speak Spanish and English, which is important as it gives his character more depth and acknowledges culture and his community. In Spider-Man issue number 2, Miles is still trying to figure out how to be Spider-Man and his grandmother comes to visit him at his mother's request. Though Miles does not speak Spanish in this issue, his grandmother does, and it's obvious he understands her. Being bilingual differentiates him from Peter, as he's connected to not only his family, but another community that would help keep him grounded. During his time in Earth-65, Gwen Stacy makes a comment about needing a spy name and dubs herself Tigra la Muerte Face, to which Miles responds with, uh, you don't speak Spanish, do you? While grimacing at her garbled spy name. Though it's an offhand comment made by Miles, it's a subtle link back to his heritage and culture learns quickly. When Miles was introduced, it was established that he was an intellectually gifted individual with an aptitude for learning. Being a hero means putting others first. I learned that from watching my dad. Peter Parker was also known for his brilliance. He did create his own web shooters after all and experimented with all kinds of different webs. Miles' cleverness didn't lead him to creating web shooters, but it did let him pick up on things quickly. He could watch videos of Peter's fighting and analyze them for his own improvements, much like a sports team watching game footage. Miles translated that knowledge of Peter to improve his own abilities as a hero at the tender age of 13. Talk about being bright for your age. He utilized this same method of self-improvement through quick learning in Ultimate Spider-Man number 6, where he studied Norman Osborn before confronting him in battle. Miles tells Norman Osborn that he studied up on him and knew his fighting style, which is why he was able to defeat him. Miles' studying and knowledge helped him become a better superhero. Not without a few bumps in the road, of course. Well, it looks like studying really does pay off in the end, doesn't it? Maintain a relationship with Gwen Stacy Initially introduced as Peter's first love, Gwen Stacy and Peter always seemed to be star-crossed lovers. She and Pete could never be together as her fate was sealed when the Green Goblin threw her off a bridge. Peter attempted to save her, but he ended up failing and Gwen passed away. Even with a clone of Gwen Stacy, Peter is unable to continue to maintain a relationship with Gwen because he and Mary Jane rekindled theirs. Hey, it's me again. Hey! Talk about relationship drama. Unlike Peter, Miles' relationship with Gwen Stacy in Earth-1610 is that of friend and confidant. Gwen helps Miles work through his feelings about being Spider-Man and his grief and pain as he copes with the loss of his mother. More recently, in the Spider-Man and Spider-Gwen comics, Miles is transported to Earth-65 where she and Miles share a kiss in Spider-Man issue 12. Like with her 1610 counterpart, Miles establishes an easy rapport with Gwen as they commiserate about being superheroes and having parents who are willing to sacrifice themselves to keep them and their secrets safe. Miles is also able to save Gwen, which Peter was unable to do in Spider-Gwen 16, when Doc Ock attacks and nearly succeeds in beating her. Be a team player, more sociable. Peter and Miles were similar in the sense that they were both smart, nerdy teenagers. However, teenaged Peter was more of a loner character who was often highly anxious. Miles managed to be more charismatic with the people in his class, as shown through his established friendship with Gonke and his roommates. Though Peter joined teams such as the Avengers, he was never a true part of them and had difficulty at times accepting help from other members. Cap Captain? Big fan of Spider-Man? Yeah, we'll talk about it later. Peter also had self-doubts, which affected his relationships with members of these teams. Miles, however, was more willing to accept help from Gonke, Mary Jane, Aunt May, Gwen Stacy, and other heroes such as Spider-Woman, Cloak and Dagger, and Bombshell in Ultimate Spider-Man. Later in Civil War II, Miles is confident enough in his identity and strength to know that he signs with Iron Man and Miss Marvel due to moral beliefs. Through this, Miles also trusts that his team will support him. This is unlike Peter, who, before being killed in Ultimate Spider-Man was told by Captain America that he was not ready to be an Avenger. In Ultimate Fallout, Cap admits that they failed to train him properly because they did not view him as a team member. Communicate with his best friend 
One of the most important things in high school is having good friends and a strong support system. Here is a major point in which Miles and Pete differ. In the second issue of Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, Gonke is introduced to readers as Miles' best friend, who provides Miles with guidance and advice. Understandably freaking out about his sudden new abilities, Miles trusts Gonke to be his confidant as he attempts to show him his newfound abilities. Gonke provides comedic relief, advice, and builds Miles' confidence up while also chastising him when needed. During the events of Civil War II, Miles feels the most comfortable going to Gonke after he sees a vision of himself killing Captain America. Miles allows himself to be emotionally vulnerable with Gonke. He's unafraid to cry and hug Gonke while leaving himself vulnerable. Miles has no issues telling him about his deepest fears of becoming a bad person because of his family history. Peter Parker, in contrast, never had a close friend and support system in high school. He never could go to anyone about his superhero struggles. We're sorry no one helped you in high school, Pete. We can only imagine how hard that must have been. Now this is a win. Turns invisible. We can all agree that both Peter Parker and Miles Morales make a pretty awesome Spider-Man, right? They're both skilled at what they do, and they're both pretty smart. However, one of the major differences between Peter and Miles is Miles' ability to use active camouflage and blend into his surroundings. Miles first discovers that he has this ability in Ultimate Comics Spider-Man, when he runs from his arguing father and uncle and realizes that half of his body is blended into the buildings around him. So cool, right? Trust me. I know. Miles' camouflage helped him escape from police and S.H.I.E.L.D. when they attempted to demask him, and yet again when he needed to escape from villains he was not yet prepared to fight. As Miles grew more confident with this ability, he used it to his advantage and would hide and sneak attack his opponents. One of the more notable uses of this tactic was when he disappeared from Earth-616 Peter and then reappeared on the side of the wall and kicked Peter in the face. This ability has also helped him infiltrate various places to help others, like Spider-Gwen when she was attacked by Doc Ock in Spider-Gwen number 16. Is this what being Spider-Man is really like? Almost every day. Well, there you have it. How cool is Miles Morales? Which one of his abilities did you think was the best? Which one would you like to have? Are there any abilities that we missed that are your favorite? Let us know in the comment section below. And while you're here, don't forget to like and share our video. If you haven't already, subscribe to CBR and check out our awesome playlist. Thanks for watching.